This is from uh, PC Space Race. <laughs> PC Space Race. Uh, once you have tasted flight, you will uh, you will forever walk the Earth with your eyes turned skyward. For there you have been, and there you will always uh, long to return from Leonardo da Vinci. That's really cool. I've never heard that quote. That's a really cool quote. Hello, this is PC Space Race here. Today I want to go over what my current problem with Starlink is and how I'm going to try to solve it. Currently what I have is obstructed. I expect an interruption every five minutes. And if I click on this, I can go in here and see my obstructions. You can see the red areas. And I have some to the west and some to the east. Now I want to go over how I'm going to try to solve this. Also, let me show you the statistics. Subtracted 1 minute 43 seconds out of 12 hours. And this changes every 12 hours. It really does. It ranges for about up to 3 minutes. But what I'm going to try to do is use a triangle to solve my problem. Now this is my current setup. I have the dish on the left and then to the west is this tree limb it's hitting. And what I've measured is I've measured how far away the tree limb is on the ground and it's about 20 and a half feet. And I've measured the angle up in the sky where the tree limb is located. And it's about 53 degrees. So here's here what I got. Got a calculator.net triangle and I've got the 53 degrees on the left 20.5 feet right here going over to the tree limb that's going to be up here somewhere and the 90 degrees going up and so let's calculate it. and this shows me my triangle my 53 degrees and my 90 now I've got to come up with a way of how high do I need to raise the starling dish up to get over that tree and what I've come up with so far so let me show you in the visibility map. I tried to just get a baseline. I know this is not going to be 100% accurate. Just a baseline of what the angle is to that tree limb. And it's showing 8 degrees. And that's to the west. Now I also have a tree limb to the east. And it, it's hard to get these measurements. I'm just letting this thing circle around and trying to grab the best I can. But here's the other one. This one's about 10 degrees. Like I said, this is not going to be 100% accurate. Just trying to get a ballpark. So, for my calculations, I need to get at least 10 degrees off my angle um, in order to get over these tree limbs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the difference. So, 53 degrees. So if I were to get 10 degrees off of 53 degrees, it would bring it down to 43 degrees. So let's come in here. I'm trying to get to 43 degrees. It's still going to be that 20.5 feet away at that 90 degree angle going up. So let's calculate that. And what that changes is this measurement over here. So if I raise this up to get that 43 degrees, then that tree limb will end up being 19 feet higher than my dish. Currently that tree limb is 27 feet higher than my dish. Now, I'm not a math genius. <laughs> I'm amazed I managed to get this far in this calculation. But I'm just trying to get a ballpark estimate. Alright, so let's calculate this out. 27.204 So we're going to minus the 19.117 that gives me 8 feet 0.087. So I need to raise my dish up at, at least another 8 feet from where it is now. And it's already sitting about 4 foot off the ground. So that means I need to be at least 12 feet off the ground to get over these tree limbs. And I know I did 10 degrees to the west and only showed 8, but I'm trying to account for that other side as well. I think I'm probably going to end up going like 15 feet just to make sure I get it there. But anyway, I think I only need about 12 foot to get over it. 
So this is what we started off with. My original four foot mount with the starling dish on it. I'm trying to get over these tree lamps. And there's some on the other side too. These are the ones that are just easiest to measure. So what I did was I got some fence posts that I had lying around. This is just galvanized steel pipe. Uh, and I put two of them together. And I just used some quarter inch bolts and stuck them together. And I actually have uh, one at 90 degrees offset from this down here a little bit further. I don't have a picture of it. I then used this auger bit that's two inches wide by 30 inches long. And it's used for gardening, really. But I just used it to drill a 30 inch hole that's two inches deep. And this took a little while. I want to say this was about 20 minutes of straight drilling. So if you want to just dig it with some post hole diggers, that's up to you. So I ended up with a hole that's two inches wide by about 30 inches deep. So I ended up with a pole that's about 15 foot tall. It's about two and a half foot in the ground. And the Starling Dish is mounted. So this is a much better angle to that tree limb up there. Here's a little closer up picture of it. You can't see it, but there's a uh, the Starlink pole mount is up here. I ended up purchasing that. So let's see what the final results were. Let's go look at our visibility. All good. Starlink has not been obstructed recently. Nice. So we have no obstructions. Let's see a few little red spots. And I know where those trees are. I'm, I'm betting that's the trees over there that I'm just barely getting over. But it's telling me I have no obstructions. And let's go check out the statistics. Network issues, four seconds. Let's go see the log. Okay, so it's been running for almost 24 hours since I did this. And I've had one network issue sometime early this morning that lasted for four seconds. That's awesome. Compared to that three minutes, wow, much better. Let's see what speed does. That's not bad. 103 megabits, megabits per second, and 7 megabits upload. That's 10 times better than my old internet. Now in the evenings, between like 5 and 10 p.m., this comes down to maybe 30 to 60 sometimes. And that's it. I have greatly improved my Starlink connectivity. My visibility is down to awesomeness. <laughs> And I'm very satisfied with Starlink at this point. Well, y'all have a great day.